Oh boy. We're live. Lighting's all right. Once again, gosh, YouTube, you got to work on your bloody algorithm or something. Always out of focus on the, uh, on the YouTube. My mic is always in focus. If I put my mic right next to my face, does that make it better? No, no, it doesn't. Well, that just goes to show YouTube's stupid. Uh, so, uh, who needs to get it stuck to them? It's not Zuck. It's not Jack Dorsey. Who's the Google person? Uh, it's that random stiff shirt suit. Can't remember who it is. Doesn't matter. This isn't the Toronto Tech Podcast. It's the Toronto Beer Podcast with me, your friend and host, Chris Schreier. Hey, Stormstead, welcome to the party. Just saw Stormstead in Block 3. Pretty sure it was Block 3 or doing a little mix pack you can order. I know I normally talk about this stuff after we drank beer, but I'm talking about it right now. It's a 12 pack. Fill your fridge is what they say. I'd like to fill my fridge. As I got advertised it, I'm hoping that there's going to be some uh, delivery, but I'm getting a different delivery. But you know what? Let's not get ahead of ourselves here because uh, we do need to drink some beer before we talk about other opportunities we're going to have to drink beer. So why don't we do that? Why don't we dive in? Uh, welcome. It is a lovely... It's getting warm out there, guys. Toronto night. I do enjoy walking the dog once the kids are in bed wearing just what I'm wearing right now, a random hoodie, T-shirt, and shorts. It's pretty good. Been waiting for that. Anyway, tonight, drinking this beauty. Now, again, I always like to say, if you're following the socials, this beer will not surprise you. It excited me. I've been missing it. I do love it. And I was very excited to see it make a return. It is Bord de Lac from Amsterdam, edge of the lake or the shoreline of the lake. The literal translation is edge of lake, I believe, or border of lake. Um, this is a, I believe it's a French style Saison, which already you're doing a lot of things right in my books. Add to that that we happen to know for a fact that Ian and his team at Amsterdam make really good beers in general, and especially uh, things like this. Uh, Saisons are perfect. So uh, this is a beer they've made it multiple times, at least two or three, I would think. I would call this at least the fourth iteration. I know for a fact, having talked a little bit to the brewer in question, this one's a little different. And I might uh, discuss it a little bit. I've actually had a couple of these since I picked it up last week. Uh, I got four in an order to my house uh, on Friday past and have had two of them, I believe. Check that three. This is the fourth. <laughs> I only know that because there's no more in the fridge. So I bought four. This is just math. So. Let's crack this bad boy open. Bord de Lac. This is a very nice, typically dry saison, as a saison should be. You don't want a, you don't want a wet saison. No, you don't want a sweet saison. Um, you can get into uh, sweeter characteristics with a beer de garde, but you still don't want it to not be dry. Um, oh, I didn't even make an effort to try and pour that on camera. My apologies. Uh, in a Guinness glass. So that's something. Uh, but look at that. Straw yellow, active, active carbonation. Crazy active carbonation. Um, not perfectly clear. It's not polished. But again, it's a. Uh, this is a, a country style beer, shall we say? Uh, the point is, oh, hey, babe. Wife's joined in. Um, yeah, it's, it's a rustic. Rustic is maybe the word I should have reached for there. Rustic style beer. So not perfectly clear. Um, but yeah, Saison's, uh, I mean, beautiful, if you're not familiar with the history, uh, style of beer that uh, was typically made by farmers um, to uh, feed their 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 staff, the people who lived uh, on the property with them. Um, it was just like their house beer and a lot of different ways of making it, different grains used in it, not just malted barley, spelt, rye, wheat, uh, others, uh, not uncommon. Um, 
This one, I believe just barley, might be some wheat in there, probably not a whole lot else. Uh, and then, yeah, obviously hops and stuff. But uh, the the Saison yeast is the key. Lots of esters, lots of cool, interesting flavors and different styles of Saison yeasts. There's Belgian, there's French, uh, there's New World, which uh, Escarpment makes an interesting one that includes a dose of Brettanomyces in it. So lots of... Uh, Lots of different iterations of a saison. Hey, what's up, brew culture? Uh, we're going to talk about brew culture in a little while, but not just yet. Uh, for now, out of this beautiful Guinness glass, let's get into this board de lac. So, hmm, it's interesting on the nose. It is um, sugary sweet, almost like cotton candy. There's a floral quality. Uh, Smell my hand. I was incidentally just before this drinking a uh, an extra credit from uh, um, Amsterdam as well. This one made with Jordan St. John, fantastic fellow, beer writer about town. And this was made, uh, I believe there's a backstory. I've read it and I've kind of forgotten half of it, but it has to do with, he teaches a, a beer appreciation course at George Brown and uh, it had to do with that. Um, so an interesting uh, cream ale with some nice corn in it and a uh, an experimental hop of some sort. They say cherry cola flavor. Let me make sure I get the right glass here. This one, incidentally, in a Great Lakes glass. I'm not drinking anything out of the right glass right now. Uh, I think I get where they're going with the cherry cola. It's in there, but it's pretty minute. There's a nice corny quality and a bit of, I would have gone more medicinally uh, hop quality to it. But back to the beer in question, Bord de Lac. I'm all over the map here tonight, guys. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Yeah, sweet cotton candy, kind of malty quality. Something a little floral for sure. Something a little fruity, the hop, I, I suspect. Like I said, I've had this a couple of times. Three, apparently. One time, I guarantee you, I wasn't paying that much attention. I was just drinking it. It was good. Mm. See, now this is what I'm talking about. Spice cabinet clear yeast esters. And that's what you want. Some Saison's don't do that right away, but that's very typical of a Saison. The immediate uh, flavor that hits you when you sip it is all yeast characteristic. Esters, perfumey, bit of spices. These are not related to the hops. Actually, that's not entirely true. In this case, some of that might be coming out of the hops, but typically with the Saison, all of those initial spice-based flavors, that's all yeast, which is great. Um, I love yeast influence in a beer, which is part of the reason why I love Saison so much and to a lesser extent, Beer de Garde. Um, I like yeast being a driver of the taste as opposed to just the thing that made it turn into alcohol. This one's got that in spades, but it's got another really interesting component. I'm going to take another sip here and tell you about it. Mm. Yeah, like um, um, like coriander, maybe a little clovey, but not as much as a wheat beer and a bit of pepper. Really nice. The other thing that's really interesting about this beer, it's almost, it, it could confuse your palate uh, in a way because it's very dry. It's maybe not like brute IPA dry. Like it's probably not, at a one on Plato yet. It's probably just a hair above that. There's a little bit, I think, of residual sugar, but I happen to know for a fact there's a nice density to the body because they used what's known as biotransformation, which is a, a, a technique where you add the hops during the fermentation. So normally we add hops in the boil or in the whirlpool just after the boil's done. Or we dry hop a beer, which is once fermentation is complete or basically complete, you add some more hops in. And with those hops that you add in, in dry hop, all you get is aroma. It doesn't really add any perceived bitterness. But some smart kids, and I think it came out of the New England IPA um, kind of field, although it might have come out of something before that and they applied this. But if you add the hops while there's active fermentation going on. I'm not 100% on the science here. I'm kind of going on hazy memories. 
but it's something to do with the way that the yeast metabolizes the actual plant material in the hops transforms, which is where bio transformation comes from. Um, some of the, um, the compounds in the hops. So not only do you extract some hop flavor, but you get, um, uh, what it comes down to is, is a change in the body of the beer. So it, it gives a creaminess or like a density to the, the liquid, which in a very dry beer, it's not that there can't be density, but density in, in liquid and beer typically is associated with sugar. So um, sweeter, say, stouts um, or like a scotch ale, for instance, might have a medium or even getting into a heavy body because there's quite a bit of sugar left in the liquid. And that makes it quite, well, syrupy or, well, dense, right? Um, the Saison is very dry. Most of the sugar has been consumed. So you're not carrying that weight of the sugar in, in the liquid. But what you've got is from this these hops and what the yeast has done to it is it's added um, viscosity to the liquid um, that you wouldn't get otherwise. Another way that people do this, and, and again, thinking of New England IPA is they do both, biotransformation, and of course they'll add oats um, or another very high protein uh, uh, grain like that. But oats is the big one. I'm going to sneeze, I think. Now it's just going to tickle my nose. Oh, it's the worst when you need to sneeze, but you can't quite. Gosh, I hate that. Anyway, the point is the biotransformation, in addition to adding an interesting hop characteristic uh, to the taste, also gives a nice weight to the beer. So this beer is both quite dry, but also has a nice weight and density on the palate. Um, it's, it's different than a lot of beers you might uh, be used to. Oh gosh, it's good though. Oh, that yeast characteristic is just amazing. Does my heart good. Um, you know, the the benchmark for Saison, Saison DuPont. Uh, you can get that, the LCBO, uh, not all the time, but it's it's a pretty regular and it's a great value. It's like 310 a bottle or something stupid like that. Um, Saison DuPont, very dry. Saison yeasts tend to be very... Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Uh, not thorough. They can ferment just about anything and especially at higher temperatures. So Saison's tend to have very little residual sugar left in them. Um, and Saison DuPont as the benchmark does that. Um, but it doesn't have that biotransformation. So the, the beer, it's not thin, but it's, it's dry. There's not a lot of weight to it. This is dry with it's not quite creamy like it's got oats in it, but there's a real nice weight and density to the liquid, which I feel like I've gone on a little bit too long about now. It's really nice. And yeah, spicy. Again, bit of coriander probably and some pepper for sure. I'm not as sold on the clove. There's a bit of clove in there, but it's not massive. Um, Finish is quite dry. There's a slight tartness to it. Some saisons can get tart to the point of almost being sour. This one's got a bit of tartness to it, but it's not massive. Um, I think of it as being almost like Pez-like uh, tartness. So there's still some... Um, Pez is quite sweet. It's a candy, but there's a bit of a, an acetic tartness to it. Um, this is like that. There's some nice weight to it. Little touch of tartness, but it's not, not by any standard sour. Um, the most important thing about this is spicy, yeasty, and dry. It is exactly what you're looking for in a Saison, but it's interesting because again, the way that it sits in your palate is not what you're expecting, but it's so pleasant. Um, the only maybe like criticism, if you want to call it that, is that Saisons, I mean, they were originally made to use a very fancy word, slake a uh, farm worker's thirst. If you were out tilling the fields and you got called in for lunch, you'd have the Saison and it was dry and cold and, and very thirst quenching, maybe a little tart as noted. Um, this one, because of the weight, it isn't quite as crushable, but I think that that's better for it. Like it makes you want to spend a bit of time with it. And it's a beer that deserves spending a bit of time with it. Um, it's really nice. This is really, really good beer. It's interesting because as I said, they've made other iterations of this 
And I don't know if this is the first time they've done a biotransformation with the hops on it, um, but I think it is. My memories of this was, it was a little bit more classically Saison, bitingly dry. Um, and French Saisons, there's, there's a characteristic to the yeast I can't quite nail down. It's a fruity, spicy thing. Um, the classic French Saison yeast in home brewing is uh, 3711 from 37. That's gotta be white, no, Y yeast. Yeah, because White Labs is the other uh, numbering component. 3711, I'm pretty sure is Y yeast. And uh, I used to love brewing with that. And I know for a fact, Amsterdam brewed with it pretty regularly too. This might not be that yeast. It might be an escarpment yeast. I'm not entirely sure. I haven't asked. Um, wouldn't be hard to find out. But uh, whatever it is, it's got some of that characteristic French Saison as opposed to Belgian Saison. Uh, there's a balance between the fruitiness and the spiciness. It's... Um, it's kind of hard to quantify, but when you taste it, you just kind of know. I don't know if you're familiar, uh, Malcolm Gladwell talked about uh, the concept of the blink concept, which is like when you're super familiar with something, you can react to that thing without thinking about it. You just, your brain, you don't have to use the thinking part of your brain. It just fires uh, some neurons and makes a decision. Um, and there's some fantastic stories about like people catching fraudulent artwork and stuff like that without fully understanding why they're just like, that's fake. And then they have to kind of go back and figure out why it is. Um, I find that for me, especially with beer yeasts, particularly, um, when I'm on form and, uh, I'm not too bad right now, but I'm not drinking as much as I did say like five years ago. Um, but in peak, you can kind of pick a yeast and go, Oh, that's this. And then you kind of stop and have to take a few steps back and work through, you know, uh, mentally why you're right. Oh, it does this, this spice character, blah, blah, blah. And you put the parts together. Um, my blink reaction on this is that tastes like a French Saison yeast. It might even be 3711. It does taste like it. Um, but it's, uh, it's very, uh, yeah, characteristic. It's, uh, it's, it's a signature taste to that yeast. Um, and this one's got it in spades. It's a really, really good beer. Mm. So the question always, and you know what? There's one really easy, obvious answer. What What are we going to eat while we drink this? I know it's not a Belgian Saison, but you still can't do much better than mussels. And especially with this one, with that extra dense um, weight to the, the beer. Saisons work really well with mussels because mussels, um, they're not fatty particularly, but they have a richness to them. And more importantly, they have a minerality. They're salty. Um, they're not like salt watery, but there's a salty quality to them and a real minerally uh, note to a good mussel, well prepared. The spices and the sort of fruity tart quality um, set off against that. Um, and then in this case, that creamy weight of the beer is going to actually partner with the kind of creamy, dense weight of the muscle. So it's going to be perfect, especially if you cook it in a liquid that is complementary, potentially actually the beer or a similar beer. And if not, maybe a very nice dry, minerally white wine, something like uh, Kiwi North Island Sauvignon Blanc or... Uh, if you're feeling really fancy, like uh, a Chablis. Again, something that's quite dry, but with a nice minerally note. Uh, it's really going to work well in that case. But for the most part, this comes in a 650 mil bottle. It ain't small. Um, you could easily donate a cup of that to the, uh, the pot of mussels. And I mean a cup by measurement, 250 milliliters. Still have 400 milliliters to put in your glass or 200 milliliters to put into two glasses to share with somebody should be a nice thing to do. Have a pot of mussels, bord de lac, It'd be beautiful. If you want some frites up in there, they're not going to do too much with the beer particularly, but they do taste delicious. And then if you have them on a plate in front of you when the mussels drip, the uh, mussel leavens, as uh, Guy Fieri would call them, uh, end up on the frites and then you can eat that and it's extra delicious. So that's what I would say. That's what you're going to do. Have some mussels with this. You're not going to go wrong. French Saison is just magnificent similarly real easy just to have it with some uh some cheese uh some nice sharp cheeses a uh, bit of bread 
you'd be doing fine. That's like good picnic fare. And if you want to be really fancy, uh, while observing stay at home orders, if you live within a reasonable distance of the lake, like I do, feel free to head on down to the Bord de Lac of Lake Ontario and have that beer there. Now, I realize I'm telling you to do something that is technically illegal. Can't drink alcohol on the shore of the lake. But that's also really dumb and stupid. So I would invite you to participate in a little civic disobedience and uh, crack a beer on the beach. Do it responsibly, you know, and don't leave the empties behind and so on and so forth. But uh, I can't think of a better thing to do than have a nice glass of beer sitting on the shore. If you follow my Instagram, my personal one, not the podcast one, you'll see I did just that. And actually, I regret I had an extra credit when I was drinking just before this. I really should have brought a board de lac because I was on the board de lac with a fire, no less. It was beautiful. Really nice way to spend a Saturday. So that's what you're going to do. Probably aren't going to eat mussels on the border of the lake. There's my fridge again. I haven't commented on that in a while. I really wish I was better at remembering to unplug that. Anyway, Amsterdam, Bord de Lac, available right now at the uh, brewery on a sander, as well as at Queen's Key, which incidentally is on the Bord de Lac. So perfect place to pick up one of these beers. And maybe come July or August, we can all go and sit on the patio on the uh, Amsterdam Brew Pub uh, patio at, at Queen's Key and uh, gaze out across the lake from the Bord de Lac and enjoy... Well, it probably won't be on top at that point. We'll probably have drank it all. But uh, enjoy another tasty beer. I always like having... Uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Oh, they make a really good saison. I want to say Tempest. No, that's the Imperial Stout. I'm blanking on it anyway. Fantastic beers. Highly recommend. Post-COVID. One of the first patios I might want to be sitting at. It's going to be the Amsterdam Brew Pub uh, right on the shore of the lake. Beautiful spot. So that's what we're having. Get some into you. They do delivery. That's how I got mine. Picked up a couple of things. Uh, as noted, some of this extra credit, really nice beer. Uh, easy uh, drinking uh, uh, cream ale, but with some complex notes. So you can kind of put your teeth into it. And I also got some Stark Pils because... <sighs> I mean, since mountain lager went away, I don't think there's a better pills. Maybe uh, Vim and Vigor, it's right up there, but the Stark is pretty good too. A ginger just ran into my bedroom and is attacking some sort of a toy. I was going to see if I could get her to come over and, uh, and have a little cuddle. She seems disinterested. Sorry. So I'm going to have a sip, and then we're going to talk about some stuff that's coming down the pike because uh, there's some stuff coming down the pike. Mm, that's so good. I'm going to have two sips. Mm. Gosh, I like that beer a lot. I drink that all day. Uh, okay. So as discussed, I'm going to pull it up right now. We're doing a tasting with Sada City and especially friends of, of the pod. We'd love to have you... Uh, we got the Lager Series uh, in partnership with Brew Culture for Unique Lagers. They are out and available for order right now. We've got the Soft Bodied Pills. Hey, I was just saying, Stark is one of the best in the province. I haven't had this one yet. It could be better. Time will tell. Oh, hey, Beer and Abozo. Saying cheers from North Bay. We were chatting earlier on Instagram. Glad to have you join us. <sighs> Incidentally, in North Bay, you can still get this province-wide delivery. What were you saying? Soft-bodied pills? Check. Gravenhurst Steam, the California Common, like uh, Anchor Steam, same style of beer. Very excited to try that. Possibly the most exciting one to me, Dad, D-A-D, not D-A-B, not Dab, my boyfriend, but like that, Dave's Affordable Dortmunder, clocking in at 5.5, about right for a Dortmund export lager. Uh, that's a German beer style I am real fond of. I like Dab, I like Oksutor Sama, or however you say it, from Godspeed. It's just a great style. Crackery, dry, not super complex. Little higher than average, 5.5, real nice beers. And then uh, possibly the funniest name, uh, the Bach, 
is uh you know it really gets my goat and there's a picture of a goat on the uh on the label and that's a bach 6.6 woo wee we're gonna leave that one till the end uh bach beers great springtime beers which it's spring so not a bad time for it what are you gonna do you're gonna go to store.sidecitybrewing.com and you are gonna order that and you know what the tasting, I haven't said this, is on May the 20th. That is a Thursday night at 7, might be 7.30, might be 7. I got it. I haven't looked at my notes. And uh, we're going to do, um, the platform we're using is Demio. Anyway, it's like a Zoom call. You can jump in, you can watch, you can listen. Myself, Sam from uh, Sawdust, quality fellow. If you're a longtime listener of the podcast, you'll be familiar with Sammy. And uh, Dan from Brew Culture going to be joining uh all three of us joining together uh to uh drink these beers talk about them talk about what they're made with and how they're made um and possibly a bit about their history as a style and uh, it's going to be a really fantastic opportunity you can buy that lager series on sawdust city's website and have it shipped to you anywhere in the province and because it's thursday the 20th that is right before the may long weekend look we get it there's shipping involved. If you just buy the four pack and pay shipping, you're going to pay almost 100% in shipping, but get other stuff. Grab some Lone Pine. Whoo wee. What else should we get? What have they got in stock right now? Available now. That's what I want to know. What's available now? Little Norway Pilsner. So good. Lone Pine. I just mentioned it. Love that beer. Everyday Magic is real good. They got the Coffee Vanilla Long Dark Voyage, which is fantastic. Princess wears, wears girl pants. Amazing. I'm just scrolling through here. Electric Storm, really nice. Haven't had Tropical Storm Mojito IPA, but it doesn't sound bad. Uh, there's no way of knowing Spring Saison. If you don't buy some of that, you're a damn fool. It's a can-conditioned Saison, like this guy. Uh, hey, what's up, Anthony? Um, get some of that. You know what? Buy one of everything. Well, maybe don't do that. That sounds a little crazy. But uh, buy yourself plenty of beer. Make it so that the shipping just goes away or it's just absorbed into the cost. But make sure you get a four-pack of that uh, lager series. Maybe get two and you can share one with a friend. Maybe get three and you can share one with two friends. I'm not saying. I'm just saying. Uh, but if you've got that four-pack, you can jump on the call. You can jump on the call whether you have the four-pack or not, just to be clear. But if you have the four-pack, you can jump on the call and you can drink along with us. And in fact, you can participate. If you want to ask questions, uh, we'll be making that available. Uh, so if you, even again, even if you don't have the beers, you can still ask questions, but it will help a lot if you have the beer. So I would invite you to jump on sawdustcitybrewing.com, head to the store, pick up those beers. I believe you need to have ordered it. Now let me do the math here. It's Thursday, the 20th, 19, 18, 17. So like around Sunday, I think is the 16th. You'll need to have ordered it by that, the, the preceding Sunday, because it takes about two business days to get that shipping out to you. So order it by Sunday, which is um, a week yesterday. Have I done the math right there? I'm not sure. Uh, Look it up. Get on the website. You know what? Just get on the website now and order it. And then you'll have it and you don't have to worry about it. Um, get some of that beer, especially that four pack. Jump on the uh, the call with us. The link will be, I'll post it. It'll be on Sada City. It'll be everywhere. It won't be hard to find. And uh, join us to warm up for the long weekend. Drink some lagers and uh, learn a little bit about them. It'll be a great time. I highly recommend. Not just because I'm involved in it. Although, let me be honest. I'm pretty excited to be involved in it. But uh, even if I wasn't, it's going to be a really good time. What else can you do? Uh, well, I just saw Left Field dropped a new beer from their fooder, uh, which is called The Kingdom, I think. Um, looks like a tasty beer. I'm going to pick up some of that. And and uh, an affordable uh, bottle at $5.95, which I think it's a 650 ml bottle. So pretty good price. Maybe a 500 ml bottle. Not sure. Don't quote me on that. Uh, Mandy's kicking me somewhere right now because I've, it's actually a 200 mil bottle and I've completely ruined Christmas. Uh, what else is going on? As noted, Amsterdam delivering Bordelac is available. Stark is available. A whole lot of other beers too, but make sure you get those two extra credit. My friend Jordan's beer, very tasty. Uh, so grab some of those. Uh, and other than that, I mean, you know, the deal with events, 
they're few and far between and they're all online. So, uh, uh, keep your eyes out though. And let me know if you have anything happening, you want a little uh, exposure. I mean, right now there's seven people listening to this live and certainly dozens of others to listen to the podcast. <laughs> dozens is a great word, isn't it? It could be two dozens. It could be 10 dozens. It's still dozens. It's more than two and less than 10. Actually, no, that's not true. It's slightly more than 10. My math is not good right now. Uh, but uh, yeah, happy to share any cool things people got going down uh, uh, because we all need something. They're going to extend the lockdown, guys. Not that most people are adhering to it anyway. So it will make no difference to most people. But, you know, ostensibly they're extending the lockdown and uh, we're going to need stuff to look forward to. Connect with some friends. If you've got, hey, can I give you a little hot tip? If you've got your vaccine and you got some friends who've got their vaccines, I know I keep telling you to stay at home and you really should, but if you really need to connect with a friend who's got their vaccine too, and just sit outside together, it'd be all right. I promise if you're outside and there's a nice breeze, you're pretty safe. Crack a beer with a person, sit six feet apart, enjoy each other's company. I'm going to do it on Thursday. I've already made plans. I got a friend coming down to pick up some guitars that uh, he needs to transport to another friend. And uh, we're going to enjoy a tasty beverage together. Safely, vaccinatedly. Actually, I'm not sure if he's vaccinated. No, I think he is. Uh, also, we'll both have had rapid tests because we have access to that through work. So we'll both know we're all right. But uh, yeah, adhere the stay at home order and don't be stupid. But if you need to and you know some people that you know you can be safe with or you understand the risks, feel free to blow off a little steam and have a little social time. It's pretty important, guys, especially now. Uh, we're all getting pretty. It's been a, it's been a minute, you know, since we've hung out with people. So a little change of tune. I know I keep telling you stick to the rules, stick to the rules, stick to the rules. I do like suggesting that, but I'm becoming more and more disenchanted with the rules they're making us and the logic they're using to make those rules. So I'm not saying break them out, right? Don't be stupid. Don't be irresponsible. But if you know people where, you know, you can be safe, just be safe and, and do it quietly. We don't want to set a bad example, but uh, if you need to grab a beer with someone, I support that. Uh, and of course, totally acceptable to grab a digital beer, uh, jump on FaceTime, Google Hangout, Zoom, whatever your 